right, folks, back here on the Sports Talk Nation. I literally do not know how to feel about this. I do not know how to feel about this at all. Justin Verlander has signed a two-year contract with the New York Mets worth $86 million. He's going to get paid $43.3 million each of these next two years, and there is a vesting option for a third year, which means he could end up being with the Mets through 2025. That would take him to his age 43 season. I have mixed feelings about this. I, I really have mixed feelings about this because on one hand, you have a situation where Jacob deGrom left this team. He didn't want to be here. He cl- clearly wanted to move on with his career and go somewhere else, whether he was just tired of pitching in New York, tired of pitching on a team, uh, uh, pitching in a situation where he would pitch great, didn't get a lot of run support, or just wanted a quieter existence down in Texas, whatever it may be, he is out of the pitcher. And the Mets, of course, giving him, offering him a three-year, $120 million contract, he decided to take less in Texas. But the Mets then turn around, feeling the need to go out there and get a big name, go out there and get Verlander to team up with Max Scherzer, of course, the two guys who were teammates back in Detroit from 2010 to 2014. But that means that you are investing just in next year, just in 2023, $86 million in two guys, one at 39 years old in Scherzer, the other at 40 years old in Verlander, to go out there and to be as dominant as they have been throughout their their careers. And make no mistake, Justin Verlander is an old-timer. He is a Hall of Famer. He is a three-time Cy Young Award winner. He's won a couple of World Series with the Astros. He's an MVP winner. He is. Uh, he was, at the start of his career, Rookie of the Year. He has done it all. Done it all. All-time great. What will he be as a New York Met? I have no idea. He is coming off a great year last year. Went 18-4, 175 ERA. All these things are great, right? Won a Cy Young Award the first year after having missed the the previous two years, 2020 and 2021, uh, in recovering from Tommy John surgery. He certainly answered the bell this past season. I am concerned about the postseason numbers he had this year where he had an ERA over five, didn't pitch well in the playoffs. I just don't know what we're going to get out of him. Are we going to see a Justin Verlander who comes out you know, gangbusters at the start of the year and slowly starts to peter out as the season wears along, as we get deeper into the summer and towards the end of the season? Or are we going to see a Justin Verlander who, like this year in 2022, had proven that he still has a lot left in the tank and could pitch at a Cy Young award-winning level? That's going to be the question. If we get the Justin Verlander that we know is a Hall of Famer, the Mets are going to be a good are going to have a good season this year and are going to be a playoff team again. If he struggles and starts to show signs of his wear and tear of his age, it's going to be a frustrating situation. It really will be. So I, I don't know how to really feel about this. Obviously, the Mets are not done. Obviously, we're just getting going here with the winter meetings and all the signings that are going to be made uh, throughout the course of this winter. And the Mets are in on just about every pitching name that's out there, whether it be Carlos Rodon or Chris Bassett, Taiwan Walker, Kodai Senga. You can still make the argument, and, and certainly the Mets know that they need to do this, to bring in at least two more starting pitchers and then fill out the bullpen. This is not a finished by product by any stretch of the imagination. And certainly Verlander brings a lot of credibility. He brings a lot of veteran uh, veteran leadership to the clubhouse. He and Scherz are going to be a big part of a big part of two veteran guys that are going to be leaned on and relied upon a lot by a lot of the younger pitchers in this rotation, much the way DeGrom and Scherzer were just a year ago. So from that standpoint, it it can't hurt your clubhouse to have that great kind of, that kind of pitcher, an outstanding pitcher like that on your team. Not going to debate that at all. I just wonder how effective he's going to be over the course of a long season and then, of course, over the course of that contract. That's my only question. I think it's a legitimate question to ask. And considering his, like, what, we, what we've seen in history, whether it's regarding just the Mets or regarding just pitchers who are towards the tail end of their careers in general, it's a big gamble to make even on a short-term deal for that much money for a 40-year-old pitcher. We'll see what happens. I hope for the Mets. I hope that it works out. I hope he's. I hope he lights it, lights it up the radar gun, 
and continues to dazzle as the Hall of Fame pitcher that he has been throughout his uh, incredible career. We'll see what the Yankees are going to do. Are they going to get Aaron Judge back in the fold? Are they going to lose him to San Francisco? Judge wants nine years or more. Do the Yankees want to commit to that kind of deal with him? And, of course, the Yankees just finalized a deal with Brian Cashman to keep him as GM through the year. I think I saw it, 2026. He is going to be there forever and ever and ever. Well, Brian Cashman as the, as the uh, head executive of the New York Yankees. Like and subscribe. Leave your comments below. What do you think about Verlander to the Mets? We'll talk to you next time.